Yesterday, Rise of Kingdoms released a bombshell face to face with the developers that so far has received a lot of praise and positivity from the community. And one of the things particularly that has a lot of people excited is the ability to swap a legendary commander for another legendary commander now if you guys missed yesterday's video go ahead and check it out because we go into depth with everything here including free passport pages a new epic ranged commander okay so definitely check out yesterday's video if you missed it there's a lot to go over but in this video I want to touch specifically on the commander swap event I want to go over sort of my expectations for this event uh, because really this is actually two separate events here and so I want to talk about that because it kind of feels too good to be true so I just want to kind of talk a little bit about this event and what I'm sort of expecting and then later in this video we're going to go over some commanders that I think you should consider swapping if you are in season two of KVK and then we'll go over some commanders that I think that you should be swapping if you are in the season of conquest or season three or later as it's listed here but first what's going on guys cheers now before we begin if you guys appreciate guide videos like this drop a thumbs up on it it helps out the channel a ton and consider subscribing because 69 percent of you guys are not subscribed and we're so close to 80 okay really quick I'm gonna go over exactly what was said by the developers here if you are familiar with this then you can skip this part of the video I will have time stamps down below there's gonna be chapters you can just skip to the next chapter but let's review exactly what the developer said okay people asked about the commander swap event and they replied by saying our plan for this event has been finalized it'll be launched in a future version rather than adding a direct commander reset event will be granting each participating governor two commander swaps at a certain cost each swap allows you to choose two commanders with some exceptions and swap their levels skill levels and star levels to help new players catch up on developing their commanders before entering the season of conquest we plan to launch this event in new kingdoms around the end of season two of the lost kingdom each character can participate once in addition to this we'll be introducing other events to help acquire season of conquest commanders okay that is the first part of the answer the second part of this answer says four kingdoms entering season three or later we plan on launching a one-time event in January of 2025 once the specific launch schedule and event details are confirmed we'll notify you through the community and in-game announcements okay so that is exactly what they said now let's go over some of my expectations for these two events okay because I personally think that these are two completely different events now upon the first time that I read this my expectation was okay we're gonna have a commander swap and at season two players will get two of them everyone else will get a one-time single swap I don't actually know if that is going to be the case the reason for that is because again this second part is completely separate okay it says for kingdoms entering season three or later we plan on launching a one-time event okay so they're having a one-time event they did not say that this one-time event is also going to be a commander swap event now I think there's a good chance that it could be because this section falls under the question about commander swap events okay so don't get me wrong this could still be a one-time commander swap event for all older players I hope that that is the case but I just want to set the expectation that they are specifically differentiating the season three or later portion from the season two portion okay this is further evidenced by the fact that they say once the specific launch schedule and event details are confirmed meaning for the post season three players the event details are not confirmed yet because they said they will notify us once they are whereas for the season two players and their potential resets coming they say the plan for this event has been finalized okay so that's kind of why the, the language here is a little bit misleading because I think this part of the equation has already been finalized they've already figured this out my expectation is that for the rest of us this part is not finalized yet as indicated by this which therefore means that all the rest of us might not be getting the exact same type of swap event that could be coming to the season two players okay so let me just get that out of the way now regarding both of these events both the season two event and the season three or later event I think that there will be one very obvious restriction uh, and it says it right here with some exceptions my expectation is that you will not be able to swap your ethel fled progress to another commander I also think you will not be able to swap your Minamoto or your Barca progress to another commander strictly because these commanders are purchased with 
dollars with money okay you have to buy them and so it wouldn't be fair if you could just straight up buy an expertise a legendary use them and then you know just swap them out for someone else maybe they'll let you do this but i highly highly doubt it okay so those three right off the rip those three commanders i think will probably be excluded from this swap event and then furthermore other commanders that might be excluded from this swap event could be commanders such as uh lubu because lubu is a pretty restricted commander in terms of what the developers can do with them of course this will not affect 90 percent of you watching this video okay most of you do not have lubu on your account so you won't have to worry about this and then furthermore there there might be there might be a limit on the ability to swap gathering commanders and the only reason that i say that there might be um, is because you are able to get these commanders much easier than you are able to get any other legendary in the game because of the commander sculpture chest you get these from a ton of different events and so it is very easy to get your hands on these gatherers now um, from my perspective i think that Ethelfled is almost guaranteed to not be swappable in the same vein as that Minamoto and Barca are almost guaranteed not to be swappable. Lubu might not be swappable and the gatherers also might not be swappable. Okay. So there's two different tiers there. There's the first three commanders I mentioned, I think almost guaranteed you can't the rest that I just mentioned, maybe you can swap them. Maybe you can. Okay. So let me just set that expectation right up front. That seems to be a very obvious exception that they're probably going to put in here. The next thing that I want to speculate on here is the cost. Okay. Because it does explicitly say that the governors at the end of season two of KVK will get two of these swaps at a certain cost. They made it very clear that there is going to be a cost associated with these swaps okay if i were to speculate here i would say that there's a couple of different routes that they could go uh the most ideal route that they could go uh is that the first swap would be free and then the second swap would cost some number of gems right i can't think of any other um you know i can't think of any other currency that they would use other than gems I would expect it to be, you know, maybe a 1000 gem requirement, 5000 gem requirement, 10,000 gem requirement, 50,000 gem requirement, something along those lines. No matter what it is, though, um, it's still going to be less. I mean, even if it's 50,000 gems, it's still less than it would cost to expertise a wheel commander from spinning the wheel, right? So even if it is 50,000 gems, and that's extremely expensive, by the way it would still probably be worth it to swap a season one commander for a season of conquest commander right so let me just get that out of the way i think expecting this to cost like gold or to have it cost alliance tokens or something, i don't think that's a realistic expectation this is an extremely valuable event all you know when it's all said and done and so I expect the cost to be relatively high at least for one of the two swaps now the other thing that they could do would be just have it a flat cost like maybe it costs 10,000 gems per swap and you can do a maximum of two that's another route that they could go or maybe the first swap is some very small amount of gems like 500 gems and then the second swap is 50,000 gems right it could be something along those lines but let me just set that expectation that this will likely not be free but even if it is again even if it's 50,000 gems I think that it's still probably worth it to do if you can take an expertise commander and transition it to a season of conquest commander, uh, that being a season one or two commander and make it a sock commander. I think that would still be worth it. Hopefully it's not too. 50,000 gem requirements, right? With a hundred thousand gems total, that would be very prohibitive for free to play players, low spenders, things like that. That would be very unfortunate, but it is possible that they could do that. The third expectation that I want to set here also has to do with the exception rule that they listed. And that is that they don't actually say that you will be able to exchange any one of your commanders for any other commander in the game. Okay. By that, I mean, it is implied that the purpose of this event is to help players get season of conquest commanders. However, it might be the case that the season two reset will help players develop their commanders before entering season of conquest, right? So if that's the case, um, if this event comes around at the end of season two of KBK, and by that, I mean, it's, it's not season three yet, right? 
if it is not season three yet when this event comes around then this event effectively will allow players to swap any of their commanders that are season two and below okay so again i know i know that i'm kind of reading into this a lot here but i'm trying to be very careful with the expectations that i set for you guys because of how this is worded okay this does not say that a season two player can exchange any commander for any other stock commander okay that's not what it says it implies that heavily sure i i'm, I'm with you on that one but it says to help new players catch up on developing their commanders before entering season of conquest if you are not in season of conquest and you're not even in season three you're in season two then you will not have access to season of conquest commanders and therefore possibly one of the restrictions one of the exceptions could be that you can only exchange commanders within the same season right so let's say you started the game and you dumped 500 sculptures into julius caesar okay and now season two is ending and you're realizing that oh my god this commander sucks now this swap event comes around and maybe you'll be able to exchange julius caesar for any other commander that you currently could have access to at that point which would be any season two or season one commanders okay that's totally possible that could be the case and that would still be good for players who made mistakes in the early game but it would definitely not be ideal right it would not be ideal at all the other thing that they could do is make it so that way you know that you can only exchange commanders of the same season so therefore you would only be able to exchange julius caesar for another season one commander and you'd only be able to exchange for example uh alexander the great for another season two or maybe even a season two or below commander as well okay um those are some restrictions again this is not confirmed those are some restrictions that they could place based on the way that this is worded and the only reason that i'm saying all these things is because i don't you know this sounds so good it sounds too good to be true almost right and so i just want to set the expectation that until this is in the game i don't want you guys to expect the ability to exchange any commander for any other commander that's not really i mean it, it implies that heavily but it doesn't say that so i'm just setting these expectations maybe this is what we could be seeing when this event does come around okay now with all of that being said if you are a brand new player to rise of kingdoms and you are coming up on the end of your season two of kvk let's let's say that the game does limit you to only getting season one and two commanders with this swap event if that's the case then what i would say is that there's only two commanders that would be worth swapping to okay so no matter who you have let, let's say again in the early game let's say you dumped a lot of sculptures into Tsao Tsao, or you dumped a lot of sculptures into richard because you thought that these would be good or you heard that martel was broken and so you got a ton of sculptures put into martel um if this is the case the only two commanders that are worth getting in at the end of season two moving into season of conquest are pretty obvious Alexander the Great because he's exceptionally good with Liu Che and Yi Song Ye. Yi Song Ye is exceptionally good with both Herman Prime. He's also very good on defense with Yu Liang, although it's very risky to run that pairing because it's so slow. More commonly, you would see him paired with somebody like um Asher Bonapal, right? Who is unfortunately a mighty governor commander, but is extremely good. You could use him with Asher Bonapal, or you could use him with somebody like Nebu, who is definitely kind of a worse version of Asher Bonapal at this point, right? Or you could also use him with somebody like Boudica Prime. Okay. Um, those are all decent pairings for Isangye in the end game even though he is not part of the single best march for archers in the end game he is part of in my opinion uh arguably part of the top two best archer pairings in the game so isong ye and alexander the great are the only two commanders pre season of conquest pre season three of kvk that would be worth getting now that would be like the worst case scenario right is that you get your hands on alexander the great and ysg and you go into season of conquest with them and that that wouldn't be a bad scenario to be in to be honest with you guys right especially if you were able to do it completely free let's say you got a ton you got really lucky you got a ton of el cid sculptures from the gold keys right and now you can swap them over to ysg that would be awesome right i think that would still be a big w for a lot of free to play and low spenders moving into season three and season of conquest but that is the worst case scenario okay now let's talk about the best case scenario for players that are in season two going into season three and let's say the game lets you actually swap any commander for any season of conquest commander or any commander in general right if that is the case and you get two of these right then what that means is you should take the two commanders that you've progressed the most on and you should swap them to 
two commanders of a single troop type in other words you would want to use this opportunity to build a single super powerful or as strong as you can get uh march for season of conquest okay so what that would mean is keeping up to date with the meta and you know returning to channels like mine or channels like chiskel or any other whoever your favorite rise of kingdoms youtuber is okay uh, returning to their channels and checking in with the current meta right if you're watching this video six months from now or a year from now then the best the single best commanders to swap to might have changed by then okay um right now at the time of recording this video i would argue that the single best pairing that you could get would be something like Zhuge Liang with Herman Prime, or it would be something like Liu Che with a William Wallace. Okay. Wherever, where's my William Wallace? Here he is. Uh, a William Wallace. Okay. That would be arguably, or you could do a Liu Che with CPO Prime. That would be another great option as well for a single best infantry pairing. Okay. Those would be the options I would steer you towards because those seem to be the most slam dunk concrete best armies that you could build right now that also look like they will continue to be good into the future right if we talk about commanders like Joan of Arc Prime we talk about commanders like Nevsky we talk about commanders like Huo these are commanders that could be power crept out of the game by another powerful AoE commander whereas if we look at commanders like Liu Che CPO Zhuge Liang Herman uh these are all commanders that have great AoE and they probably will not be pushed out of the meta anytime soon okay so my recommendation would be to build one very strong season of conquest army moving into season three of kvk okay so use both of your swaps on a single troop type either infantry or archers or maybe six 12 months from now maybe calves are in a better spot and then you do whoever with joan of arc prime or whatever right that would be the play uh, that would be my best recommendation for you guys moving into season three okay with all of that out of the way now let's turn our attention to the second part of this face to face with the developers which is the one time event in January that will go live for all players in season three or later. Okay. Which is going to be a majority of you guys watching this video today. Now, as I mentioned before, this could be a swap event, just like the, the, the other part of this, of this listing here, right? It could literally be a, a swap event. Uh, it's the exact same event, except it goes live for all players one time in January. And that's it. And boom, there you go. In which case, you know that would be kind of the best case scenario right we also don't know if this event will have a cost associated with it or if it's just going to be a sort of like hey here you guys go thanks for supporting the game for six years here's one commander swap i think that would be beautiful there is no mention of cost listed for this part of the event but this uh, event details are not confirmed yet so they probably don't even know if there's going to be a cost yet or not because my expectation is that this may vary slightly from what we already know from the top portion here okay again we also don't know if there's going to be restrictions here okay it could be the case just like i said before that there are restrictions in that um first of all again i don't think you're going to be able to to swap out or exchange or reset or refund or whatever you're not going to be able to do that for ethel you're not going to be able to do that for minamoto or barca or any of those commanders my, that's my expectation same thing possibly not lubu possibly not the gatherers because of the way that you obtain those commanders those are some potential restrictions as well but again it could be the case that you can only swap uh, commanders of the same generation or sorry the same season right so let's say they give every player on the game the ability to swap one legendary commander if you pick a season one commander perhaps you will only be able to swap it to another season one commander still a good deal but not ideal right um the other thing is you know maybe you could swap a season two for a season two or a season of conquest for a season of conquest right if that's the case again it's not best case scenario it's not ideal but it would still be good right because i'm sure there's many of you guys that are watching that have invested in a season three or season of conquest commander that have no use for those commanders anymore i'm looking at commanders like Boudicca. i'm looking at commanders like harold maybe even sargon for example right he's a commander that people would consider resetting if you have invested a lot in commanders like chuck for example that would be a commander worth resetting i think a lot of people aren't really using zhang yu anymore or leonidas or cyrus or ramses or or any like these are there's so many season of conquest commanders that are just so far removed from the meta that even if there was an a restriction that only let you swap season of conquest commanders there's still plenty of great choices for commanders that you could swap and still get really good value there they also could take a sort of hybrid approach where if you did want to swap a season one commander for a season of conquest commander maybe there would be some sort of penalty for this right so for example maybe 
a season of conquest swap to another season of conquest commander would cost you know x amount of gems or be free but if you swap a season one commander to a season of conquest commander maybe it's 10,000 gems or 50,000 gems or something like that right maybe there would just be a fluctuating cost depending on if you're moving across seasons or within the same season additionally it could be the case that there is sort of a a swap ratio right so if you swap a season one commander for a season of conquest commander maybe it's the case that it's a 50 percent swap ratio right so if your Cao Cao is expertise then when you swap it to a season of conquest commander you get 350 uh sculptures worth of skill points if that makes sense right so that would effectively be half of the cost of an expertise Cao Cao right it's 690 sculptures to expertise Cao Cao it's also 10 sculptures to summon him so that's 700 total uh which you know half of that is 350 that's how I arrived at that number it could also be the case that you can only swap two commanders that you've at least summoned okay that could be another restriction here uh you might be able you know you might not be able to swap Cao Cao for let's say uh Choi Young right because you know I don't have him yet so maybe that's a, a restriction that could be in place right so these are just some ideas that I want to float around the community okay because again we don't know the details for this event so I want to set the expectation that it's it might not be the best case scenario the the gold scenario for all of us right the older players would be that this event comes around it's a one-time event it is free and you can swap any commander for any other commander and that's it open and shut case thanks for playing rise of kingdoms thanks for supporting the game for five six years here you go here's a free swap and everyone says gg everyone praises lilith and thanks them for doing the right thing and everyone moves on and is happy about it and then that event never comes back again so it can't be game breaking because it's a one-time thing it's one commander one and done open and shut case that is best case scenario but i do want to set these expectations that there could be a handful of restrictions or costs associated with this event and even if there are this is still insanely good value for people and you will use this is a must take you have to take advantage of this right you must do this it will be great no matter the cost most likely unless it's like a hundred thousand gems or 200 at that point it's like okay well who even has that right and except for the whales okay now that i have completely padded this video with expectations right i'm really trying to set up your expectations to be realistic okay now that we've done that let's talk about some of the options that you can swap to okay because it's a little bit different if you are a a an end game player uh you might already have some armies built whereas as i mentioned earlier for a season two player going in the season of conquest it's important that you have at least one good meta army right that's like your top priority from there though if you, if you already have a couple of good armies then this might be an opportunity for you to upgrade an existing army or have a really heavy head start on building a whole new army for your account okay and so let's go over that now but what we have to first start with is which commanders should you be getting rid of right that would be like the number one priority who do you actually get rid of I know a lot of people were like I'm getting rid of my Sargon right which okay fair right fair I don't foresee a future where we use Sargon however he's not one of the best commanders that you should be getting rid of right if you've already expertise Sargon there's a good chance you should keep him okay some people joked around and said they're getting rid of William Wallace because he's no better than Alex for them that's fair as well but again these are not commanders that I would be swapping okay in the golden scenario where we're able to swap any one legendary for any other legendary the number one place that you should be looking are towards commanders that you already have sculptures for to expertise again what do I mean by this well let's take a look at my Charles Martel for example okay he is an expertise legendary and the event for season two at least specifically states that it will be swapping the levels skill levels and star levels okay it does not say that you would be swapping number of sculptures in the case that you do an even swap from one commander to another and assuming that this works the exact same way for older kingdoms which again is the dream scenario but we don't have that confirmed we don't know if that will be the case but assuming that is the case then a commander like Charles Martel for me would be the number one priority why is that well I could swap him and and take all of his skills and all of his stars and level and swap him over to um a season of conquest commander ideally right and then I still have 812 legendary commander sculptures left over 
I could then go in and just expertise Martel again, and it would effectively be a free swap for me. Okay. All of my Martel progress would be transferred over to a, another legendary. Let's say I wanted to go all in on, I don't know, Osher Bonapal, right? Like, let's say I want to start building another Archer March. I could just swap Martel to Osher Bonapal and then go back and expertise my Martel again. Okay. And then at that point, I effectively would have basically a level one Martel that would have full skill points or whatever the case might be. Maybe I would level him up a little bit just to unlock of skills and get them expertise for like bastions or whatever but that would be like the only thing that you would have to do um and that would be amazing right that would be perfect best case scenario same thing with my Cao Cao, right i have 949 of this uh commander right so if i swapped him i could expertise him right away and i would effectively lose nothing i would lose nothing and that would be the dream scenario okay now the other thing that they could do which i think would be a troll move and it would be hilarious is if they literally just swapped over your total cumulative sculptures for that commander to the new commander right so not only would i swap my expertise to that new commander but i would then like let's say for example i swap my tsao tsao to ashurbanipal i would have an expertise to ashurbanipal with 900 and 949 sculptures left over that would be hilarious and it would still be worth doing obviously right maybe not tsao tsao because i use him for peacekeeping but i could swap somebody over that i don't care about like my i don't know el cid or my frederick or something probably not el cid actually i would keep el cid because of this fourth skill this is a great bastion for certain kvks but maybe i would do somebody like uh frederick right who like really like yeah you get a, you get a nice little you know bastion skill here but like for the most part i'm probably never going to use frederick right or you know julius caesar it's like eh, i don't i don't love these skills his his museum relic is nice but i don't love them I would still swap him even if I, I have to swap those overflowed sculptures over, which again would be a troll move. That would be hilarious. But I could see them doing that because again, if you are an older player who can like, you know, double expertise these commanders, then effectively there's there's no downside. You're just getting a free legendary, right? You're basically getting a free, fully expertise legendary. And to me, that seems too good to be true. Although again, that's the dream scenario. That's the golden scenario. And I hope that that's what they do because they would get a lot of respect from the community if they actually did that all in all assuming that we do get the dream scenario which is that you could swap anyone for anyone else then the best case scenario would be if you're able to swap the gatherers then I would swap Ishida where even is he I don't even see him on here but I would get rid of my Ishida and I would swap him for a season of conquest commander that I'm looking at oh he's literally right next to her uh the reason I would get rid of Ishida is because the expertise on Sunduk and Cleopatra are actually quite good you get bonus resources for them especially Especially Sunduk, exceptionally good, right? Ishida is not really in that same boat. So if you can swap Ishida to a SOC commander, first of all, that sounds too good to be true. But um, if you can do it, right? And then you would basically either use your overflow sculptures if you have them, or you could again just get more of Ishida from these uh pick one chests, the commander sculpture chest. You just boom, boom, you're done. You get you get another expertise, you're golden, right? That would be the play. If you can't do that, then I would recommend, you know, again, looking at other season one commanders that you have expertise that you're never going to use. So some prime candidates for that would be Frederick it would be uh Julius Caesar really I think Julius Caesar might even be a better candidate um actually no I think I think that uh Frederick would be a, a very good candidate to swap um if you have an expertise Ragnar for example I think this could be a decent commander to swap as well these are some of the like bottom of the barrel like worst commanders in the gold keys and so like yes you could lose a decent bastion skill from them but at the end of the day like i would rather have a fully expertise sock commander than a decent bastion on a in some kvks if it comes around you know what i mean so really um the prime suspects to swap here would be caesar uh frederick or ragnar those would be top tier swap uh, commanders but even if you have to swap commanders like martel or Cao Cao or even el cid you still are, go are going positive here right like yes this is an ex insanely good bastion skill and if you can't if you don't have to get rid of this then don't because this is so good but you know it's that's a price you would have to pay and I think that price is worth paying same thing with Martel you might foolishly think that oh maybe one day I'll still use Martel um that you know there are so few instances where I would recommend a player use Martel these days some people still use them to cheeseburger out of their city if it works for you great some players still use him in certain garrisons for anti-swarm if that works for you great but at the end of the day you know it, he's not he's not meta right and so if you have to swap him if he's the one that you have the most progress on i would still go ahead and swap him okay but again at the end of the day um i would look towards commanders like frederick and like julius caesar and maybe even ragnar those might be commanders that i would look at swapping for a season of conquest commander now i think uh, funnily enough on the same vein as them as genghis khan actually i think that 
his support skills aren't that great either and so like if you have to swap your con like let's say you expertise con back in the day he would be almost equally as good of a swap as commanders like julius caesar and like frederick right i just i don't love his support skills they're kind of conditional here like this only works under 50 percent. the skill is so bad this skill right here i don't even remember which of these two is the is the support skill uh i think it's i think it's i think it's this one that i saw as a support skill once i don't remember but regardless like his skills are trash so you could swap khan as well he would be fine the only reason that i'm not mentioning commanders like tamiris for example are that some players use tamiris in a seven army lineup even to this day i don't think it's the best seven army lineup but you could still run her and she's fine fine same thing with like uh you know Edward of Woodstock like he does actually have a pretty good he has pretty good support skills right um he's not a good commander you should not use him but as a support skill commander for bastions he is quite good same thing with Constantine he's good in Canyon right so you could still use him he's also still decent in garrisons if you have meta everything and then of course Alexander the Great is still good so I wouldn't swap him but those are kind of my recommendations okay some of the leadership commanders from the gold keys uh the gatherers if you can or Genghis Khan basically right like those are the those are the swappable ones in my opinion all right now if there is a restriction that you must swap commanders of the same season okay so there by that I mean season one for season one or season two for season two or sock for sock then in that case things get a little bit more tricky right and what you would want to do is look at your seasonal conquest lineup and look at commanders that not only are not meta now but are not likely to become meta in the future right and so you know this is where i said earlier that sargon might actually not be worth swapping and why is that well is he a bad commander yes is anyone seriously using sargon in the field i genuinely have not seen sargon in the field in since he came out basically like i just you don't see him he is not good okay so because of that you might think he's swappable but the thing is he has a lot on his kit that is attractive even though the active skill is garbage right and because of that and especially because of this odd debuff this odd debuff is insane okay because of that it is possible in the same way that Alexander the Great was effectively not usable a year and a half ago right or two years ago in season of conquest I should say in the same vein that he wasn't usable but then became like pseudo meta with with Liu Che you could I could at least see a future where they release a a synergy for Sargon that is so good that Sargon is jumped up to a uh, meta right um it would it could be a commander that says all damage over time effects are dealt instantly or something like that and then boom uh sargon has a great odd debuff he's got single target hit like there's you know who knows right who knows but the point is that his kit is so complex there's so many different ways that it could be abused later down the line even though he's been effectively useless since his release so with that being said what i would instead recommend that you do is look back on commanders that are in season three that are extremely old were exclusively used as sort of vanilla beat sticks okay which is a term that I use a lot on the channel if you guys don't know what I mean by that what I mean is they are just vanilla damage all they do is damage that's all they do they don't have really good debuffs they don't have really good buffs they don't have really good anything all they were made for was dealing damage older vanilla beat sticks are great commanders to swap because damage is so easily power crept moving forward that if they're already power crept now from damage then they will continue to be power crept for damage later in the line most likely right whereas again somebody like sargon has interesting effects that maybe can be abused or synergized with later um e even commanders like Harold, right like he he's got some interesting like pops of his active skill and stuff like that like those might not be the number one things that you want to reset uh, another thing you could look at would be older rally and garrison commanders that haven't been meta in a very long time right these would be great commanders to swap out i guess Wu is a second gen commander so not great but you know maybe theodora or somebody like chandra gupta right these are rally garrison commanders that you're never gonna probably use right because they were built for rally garrison and the meta has evolved so far past them at this point that you're just not going to use them again right like there's just there's just commanders out there that you simply will not use again for a rally and garrison perspective and if that's the case then you might as well go ahead and swap them out because you know in the instance where you have commanders like again Sargon with his unique odd debuff that might 
somehow come in handy later in the line or you look at commanders that have like Ilgamesh who has a unique blood craving debuff right that's really interesting as well you have commanders like Honda or even commanders and this is gonna be controversial but commanders like Chuck these commanders stack skill damage right and so it's like are they meta no have they historically been meta no will they ever be meta unlikely but not zero right it's not a zero percent chance whereas if we look at these vanilla beat stick commanders that like were old rally garrison commanders like they probably will never be meta again right because the rally garrison meta just moves ahead so much faster than the open field meta right like the open field meta we are still using some players are still using ysg in the field some players are still using guan some players are still using william these are commanders from four or five years ago right and we're still using them as open field meta to this day whereas if you tried to use a garrison or rally commander from four to five years ago like they were power crept a year after they were out right and so that's why i would point you guys more towards those vanilla commanders that don't really do anything other than beat down a single target right those would be my number one recommendations for swapping in season of conquest if there's a restriction of only being able to swap within the same season so priority number one would be you know gold key commanders or gatherers that you have excess sculptures of priority number two would be gold key commanders that you don't have excess sculptures of but like you might as well get rid of them and then priority number three would be if you have to go within the same season i would say get a a, a season of conquest commander um and exchange one of your older season of conquest commanders that have been completely power crept now with that being said if the only older commanders that you have are commanders like sargon then yeah sorry sargon you're gonna hit the bench you're out of here you'll reset to zero you're donezo that's it goodbye have fun good luck same thing with like Boudicca for example yes yeah, she's got a unique debuff on the active skill there's a lot to love about her still but she's power crep she's done she's done so that's it you got to put her on the bench she's reset to zero even Guan Yu maybe at this point Guan Yu kind of power crept a little bit by Ragnar right I actually really miss a silence in the field I've been I've been fighting with Ragnar now but I do miss Guan silence in the field it is definitely noticeable now that it is gone anyway with that being said those are my kind of recommendations and expectations for this upcoming commander swap event obviously as we know more about these events then you know stay tuned I will make videos about them and we will talk more in depth about them as these events come closer and closer as of right now the soonest we're going to be seeing these is January of 2025 that is when they listed the one time sort of swap event for season three or later to be fair they didn't actually even call it a swap event they just called it a one-time event but that's the soonest that we would see either of these types of events or you know this just says it'll be launched in a future version but it's been finalized maybe this version comes out first who knows maybe this comes out at you know during the Christmas or New Year's update or something like that and then this comes later at the end of January who knows right but that would be the soonest that we would see these things and you know as we get closer to those those days and as we learn more about these events of course stay tuned here because I will make videos covering this and updating you guys on my recommendations maybe things will change in the next month or two based on what we know about the event there may be some clear cut commanders that you would want to swap for these uh these events and i will make a video talking about that later but anyway guys i just wanted to make this video to sort of set the expectation i don't want to let you know i don't want you guys to think that like oh my god i'm going to be able to swap my ethel fled for uh you know Zhuge Liang, right like uh, that might not be the case okay it might not be the case so i wanted to set this expectation and sort of where my mind is at on who i'm planning on resetting depending on the different restriction levels that might be in place for these uh events if you found this video useful informative or entertaining drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton of helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time I upload a rise of kingdoms video because 69 percent of you guys are not subscribed and we are so close to 80,000 subscribers and comment down below your thoughts on this do you think that there's going to be like heavy restrictions here or do you think Lilith is going to do the right thing and just give us like exactly what we're asking for let me know in the comment section below what you think the expectations expectations are for these events I'm really interested to see what the community sort of thinks about this overall though I think in general no matter sort of what they do unless the cost is insanely high I think all in all this is an extremely good update even if there are some restrictions that we mentioned in this video but let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace